Today we'll be starting things off talking about Starship's current status as it awaits its impending boom time in Boca Chica. Then we'll discuss some good news concerning NASA's Artemis program that involves SpaceX, check in on Crew Dragon, Starlink, and other upcoming launches, then finish with our honorable mention and your questions in Kevin's classroom. That is I, and this is SpaceX in the News. As I'm sure you're already aware, last weekend SpaceX cryo-tested Starship SM4 with liquid nitrogen, reaching 4.9 bar, which is good enough for flight. So now it's on to the next step in this great adventure to Mars, Starship's first static fire using a single Raptor engine, which by the way did make its way down Highway 4 to the launch site on Monday. It has since been installed on Starship and definitely appears to be off-center, which is to be expected since this particular thrust puck has three triangulated engine mount locations. However, when it comes to the future 150 meter hop, who really knows at this time what that play will be. Anyway, on Tuesday, flamage was seen coming from a vent tower, a site I'm sure we all miss from the Starhopper days, presumably to burn up methane boil off as the ground storage tanks are being filled. More flamage was also seen today. And speaking of Starhopper, engineers have been spotted over the past week or so stripping off her parts for some kind of salvaging purposes. SN4 static fire is expected to happen tonight or at least sometime this weekend. You just never know for sure with these things until it happens. And it should be noted that Elon expects the 150 meter hop could happen within the next few weeks. I did release a breaking episode earlier this week, so if you'd like to know more about what Starship has gone through, I'll put a link in the corner here. SpaceX has filed another special temporary authority with the FAA to fly Starship SN5 to 20 clicks up and back starting May 20th. So yeah, we could possibly be seeing a 150 meter hop happen, followed closely by the 20 clicker. Starship SN5 is nearing its day for stacking, as almost all of its parts, save for the fins, have been constructed. She even got a nose job, or just a nose in general. Yeah, despite the microbiology situation, SpaceX has not slowed down their efforts, at least not noticeably. And now that Cameron County is opening back up today, will we even see faster progress? Really, what speed is faster than ludicrous speed? Probably Elon on speed while already going ludicrous speed. Free America meow and unleash Elon on speed. Say no to drugs kids and just get high on life and the occasional Starship fumes. Also, some of you have been asking lately what's going on with SpaceX's return to the port of LA, which is going to be a future site for another Starship factory, again. And it was great timing because another tuber and contact of mine, Midlife Crisis, just posted a video of some new equipment that has been recently brought to the site. So things may start escalating there pretty soon as well. Check out his video below for more. Transitioning now to Artemis, my boy NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstein just announced some pleasing news yesterday. SpaceX, along with the National Team and Dynetics, have been chosen to develop human landers for the journey back to the moon. Of course, the National Team consists of Blue Origin, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and Draper Lab. Dynetics will work with a robust team of more than 25 subcontractors to build their two-stage lander concept, that includes a single element with ascent and descent capabilities, and a unique crew cabin that sits low to the moon's surface so, you know, the astronauts don't kerbal it down a ladder. And then, of course, the really exciting news for this channel in particular, yes, I am transparently biased, you're welcome. SpaceX's human lander design is a single stage solution, commonly known as Starship. Heard of it? Their fully reusable launch and landing system designed for travel to the moon, Mars, and beyond included a proposal for an in-space propellant transfer demonstration and uncrewed test landing. Can't wait to see it. And really exciting is also a lunar-optimized starship that can fly many times between the surface of the moon and lunar orbit without flaps or a heat shield required for Earth return. So that means what you're looking at here is a brand spanking new version of starship, moonship, or moon ferry. SpaceX was selected by NASA last month to deliver supplies to the Gateway Lunar Station, and that's how they're going to do it. With large habitable and storage volume, Starship is capable of delivering significant amounts of cargo for research and to support robust operations on the lunar surface to enable a sustainable moon base. That was a run-on sentence. It can also hold plumpy telescopes. So congratulations SpaceX and team, the award is well deserved. Moving on just hours after last week's video was posted, SpaceX released several engine photos. We'll start off with this one of the 100th second stage vacuum Merlin engine that SpaceX produced. They also tested one in McGregor, Texas last week, the exact one that will help ferry the first official Dragon crew to the space station, known as Crew-1. And while they were at it, they also fired up the Falcon booster that will lift the Crew-1 astronauts off the Earth. Crew-1 is the follow-up Crew Dragon mission to Demo-2, and Demo-2 is scheduled for May 27th. 
NASA and SpaceX had a live news conference today for Demo 2, and it began around 11 a.m. Eastern Time. I covered the first part live for my eccentric members. Not a whole lot of new news was worth mentioning at the moment of this recording, but they did show off some pretty sweet pics and clips. What you're looking at here are the astronauts for Crew 1. So yeah, things are moving really fast for the second Crew Dragon mission as well. And with impeccable timing, at the conclusion of today's press conference, Crew Dragon finally completed its final test of its upgraded Mark III parachutes. God, I love it. Moving on to Starlink, the booster from last week's mission arrived at the Cape over the weekend, and Greg Scott was there to capture the magic. Quite frankly, it never gets old seeing one of these toasty Falcon fire sticks paraded into port, like a conquering king. It even has subjects doing all the dirty work. What an arrogant monster. We get it, Booster. You've been to space four times more than me. Call me when you get back from your fifth trip. But not only did the Booster survive this one, so did both the fairing halves. They made their way back to port in a more humble fashion, on Miss Tree and Miss Chief lying down. SpaceX did not attempt to land them in the nets for this one. Instead, they were fished out of the ocean like a nerdy version of Deadliest Catch. The next Starlink launch is scheduled for May 7th at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Now it's time for today's honorable mention. Rocket Lab is back and they're heating things up. Not New Zealand, but America. In case you weren't aware, New Zealand and American rocket company Rocket Lab has been working on a new launch site at Wallops Island, Virginia, where they eventually hope to launch up to 12 missions a year, at least at first. And for the first time, they just rolled out one of their electron rockets to LC2, where it went vertical and seamlessly performed an integrated systems test to verify launch systems. Also a hot ignition test and a static fire. The first launch from the site is scheduled for Q3 of this year. The remaining step is to complete a NASA certification for the autonomous flight termination system. It will be a dedicated mission in partnership with the DOD's Space Test Program and the Space and Missile Systems Center's Small Launch and Target Division. You government boys need to find some better acronyms. All right, listen up. It's time to take your questions in Kevin's classroom. No yelling on the bus! Hi Kevin, could SpaceX reuse slash expend a Falcon 9 slash heavy second stage? And if so, then how would they do it? Hey, thanks for the inquiry, Dave. So could SpaceX reuse a Falcon second stage? Well son, everything's possible as long as you put your mind to it. And yeah, in situations like this, having a boatload of money probably helps a lot too. Elon Musk and SpaceX at one time or another did float the idea of reusing their second stage rockets, but the ideas never really took off. Pun not intended. In 2018, Elon tweeted that SpaceX was going to try to bring a rocket upper stage back from orbital velocity using what is essentially a giant party balloon. Probably something similar to the tech NASA is looking into concerning inflatable heat shields, which aims to create enough drag to drastically slow the descending stage. But screw parachutes, gasp! Elon was thinking about turning to the dark side with bouncy houses. Treachery. <laughs> you can't take the guy seriously, man. So, you know, thank goodness that all fell through. And just a couple months later, he tweeted that his team instead was going to build a mini Starship and use it as an upper stage of a Falcon rocket. That way they could propulsively land it. But like the others, it didn't take very long for that idea to fall through as well. Opting instead just to speed up Starship development. This was around the time they made the switch from carbon fiber to stainless steel. Thank you for your question, David. Oh wait, you have another one. What was the name of the SpaceX rocket engine that was used on the second stage of Falcon 1? Thanks. Although the second stage engine used on a Falcon 9 rocket is a Merlin engine, same as the first stage, just vacuumized for efficiency, the second stage engine on a Falcon 1 was actually the Kestrel engine. Its design is similar to the Merlin, however the real notable difference is the way propellant was fed into the combustion chamber. Instead of using a turbo pump, it simply relied on tank pressure to keep the fuel flowing. You can learn a little bit more about rocket engines by clicking this video in the corner here. Well that's all I have for you guys today. I'd like to thank my eccentric members and patrons for their monthly contributions and keeping this content flowing. If you'd like to sign up for more eccentric content, you can find a couple different options to choose from in the description below this video. Thank you all for tuning in, have a nominal weekend, and until the next one, Godspeed. This video was sponsored by Musk Cologne. Get yours now. Available nowhere.